Hi, welcome to the Kenny Veach M Cave Mystery. Today, I want to share with you a very interesting finding which dates back to 2021, I believe, regarding the possibility that Kenny Veach's body was found on satellite imagery. Maybe a lot to take in for some people. I've only just stumbled across it recently. What I want to do today is share with you the screenshot, the photo of this supposed body of Kenny captured on satellite imagery and analyze it as we go along. This was not found by me, but found by another person out there on a Facebook page to do with finding Kenny Veach. I want to present it to you. You can share your own thoughts, opinions, whether you agree or disagree down below in the comment section. And for those that are currently here in the live premiere, welcome. Be sure to chat along, share your reactions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. What I want to do today is analyse, give my actual thoughts on the matter and hopefully come to a conclusion by the end. But also, what it does open up the possibility and the interest in other locations that could be searched, whether it be directly for Kenny, the spot where the supposed, you know, remains have been seen, or if there's any caves within the area. And maybe for some people, this area, what we're looking at today, might become familiar with some, okay? More so the hikers that have been out there. But nevertheless, the order of how we're going to do things today, I want to present to you where the post came from to begin with, the Providence, explain that, a bit of backstory. Then we can go on to the maps and, you know, pinpoint location, measure, distance, etc. On top of that, I want to do a 360 degree photo review of another location near to Hidden Forest Trail, as some people were saying, could you see the remains of a body in that area, which I can't see myself, but we're going to look back at it and zoom on in and have a closer look, whether that be Kenny Veach or another missing person out there. It's all about tying it in together because it's a common theme today. Remains, body, satellite imagery, okay? Compare, analyze, and then later we can also acknowledge the previous comments and if there's any questions from last night's video or the one before that and catch up there, okay? So if you have suddenly come along, you want to catch up on previous videos, you want to stay up to date, feel free to follow my playlist on my channel and check my previous videos out. There will be links down below in the pinned comment section if you wish to check them out as well. Before we go any further, just want to say big shout out to Cleo the Playful Witch for her presence and super chats last night. Very good of her, very explosive, very good in general. Anyone else interested in true crime, maybe interested in Ted Bundy, certain serial killers, make sure to check Cleo the Playful Witch's channel out. You may see her in the chat tonight, likely, so you can go from there. If you need the link, maybe I can post it down below as well, okay? So that all said and done, let's get right into it now and see what this is all about regarding Kenny Veach's supposed remains found on satellite imagery. Right, so here we are. This is on one of the Facebook pages, and I'll zoom on in if it's easier for you. Maybe that will do. It says, in search of Kenny Veach, it's a public group on Facebook. Anyone can join and people can publicly see the post as well, right? So if you are interested in Kenny Veach, you want to revitalize this group on there and start discussions where you know where to go, that's the name of it, In Search of Kenny Veach. As for the background art, that's actually of the mineshaft, Kenny Veach mineshaft, where there's some flowers laid by, some kind of wallet or leather, loose change as well. And I believe that was by Silver Heels back in 2021 when Jay Silver Heels, a fellow hiker, went out there. Hopefully Jay Silver Heels is here watching or watching later. If not, I'll try and summon him now. They say, say his name three times in a row. Let's see. Jay Silver Heels, Jay Silver Heels, Jay Silver Heels. Are you there? Hmm. Anyway. Scrolling on down, 
the description. This group is mostly to be able to upload information in one place that people can refer to and it is also there forever for my reference and I can direct others to it if they are searching. There are other groups and also YouTube videos and comment sections for info. Group is not really a social club. Okay. Who set it up exactly? Not quite sure. But the last active post on the page was 17th of July 2021 at 19.24. So really, it, it's kind of outdated now. Last post by Jay Silverheels. I won't make it back up there for a while and the other methods of communication work better. Maybe this was around the time when Jay Silverheels injured himself, said he was in a wheelchair. Next minute, he said he wasn't. Then he rose up like, Mammy Dali, second reincarnation! Something like that. And I thought, Jesus. So, a little bit all over the place. The penguins, the snakes have all waddled off, gone into hiding. Uh, maybe hiding from Silverheels, but <laughs> nevertheless... It's just a backstory there. And this is one of the posts on the page, which was done 11th of January. I guess January 2021 by Bruce Spires. And this was at 0000. You can see the photo. It looks very blurry, right? What are we looking at? And this is the thing. I was able to pinpoint it. Okay, so it's all under control. We're going to go on Google Earth in a second. But this was the you know thing being pointed out. Is it Kenny Veach, what we see on screen? And when looking at it, it's just a blurry mess. How can anyone say, is that Kenny? I said, we'll look at clearer imagery. There is a few of the images provided by Bruce, though, on previous posts, which did help guide me to the area, roughly speaking. And as for the time scale, I think it's all in a line with one another because Jome Canyon, Mojave Desert, around that area, it tends not to be updated. I think it's still possibly stuck in 2019. If you go on Google Earth Pro, it might be updated to 2022, possibly, but that's a different, you know, a different like device, different platform, really. So we're just using this one because whilst other times you may want the most recent relevant imagery, because the Kenny Veach case dates back to 2014, the older the satellite imagery, the better it is, right? Now, yes, you can go on Google Earth Pro and set it back to 2016 or maybe 2013. I think, I don't know if 2014 is included or if it jumps that, I can't remember, but when you're on Google Earth Pro, the quality gets significantly worse. And as well, you can't rotate the image the same way as you can on Google Earth, the standard version. So there are limitations and it's very annoying, but we're just working with what we've got, okay? So we're taking that all in mind. Let's head on over to Google Earth. I've loaded up a project. It'll make it easier for you to understand. So here we are on the map. We zoom on in. Of course, you've got Jome Canyon here, as we've seen. Blackgate Canyon on the right. Jome Canyon up there. There you go, Jome Canyon, which does go up that way, heading north, mineshaft, etc. We'll go back over this shortly so it makes more sense for the understanding of how can Kenny Beach go from here to over in the distance. It will make a bit more sense after. Let's focus on the area where the remains were supposedly captured on satellite imagery. And if we rotate looking east, east towards Sheep Peak, okay? We zoom in here. We see the markers. I'm going to explain it right now. So the blue ones over there are more so confirmed markers, right? In terms of where the mine shaft is located, where the M Cave exit route is. I know SB Vegas Adventures, a fellow hiker, has used that way as an entrance going up to the supposed M cave, the, the mine shaft going over uh, Wild Horse Pass that way. But most of the hikers have come down Pitcher Canyon, right? And Kenny Beach as well. So that's why I've used those markers there. The red markers are more new, like relevant to what we're doing today. And it's even marked here where it says Black Hills, which is good. Okay. Um, I did try looking for photos, but unfortunately, it's blank, which is very unfortunate, right? Obviously, you got like this detail there, but you don't really give off much. 
you got Black Hills Gap here, but once again, clicking on it, it doesn't show any images or anything. And as for the 360 degree stuff, nothing, which is very unfortunate, right? So, we've got mountains here, right? All going in a row, like a spine, in a sense. In parallel to the mountains, canyons, east, over that way. Just going past the um, Jermay Canyon, right? Heading towards Hidden Forest Ridge, Hayford Peak, over that way. But adjacent to Sheep Peak, as you can see. So if Kenny Veach was up at Sheep Peak at the time or in the past, you know, the view looking down to here, lower ground, you'd be able to see to an extent, right? More so the backside here, okay? Which appears a bit more flatter, in a sense, smoother, not as shady. Wouldn't really give off much. Take in mind, it's probably the sun, the casting of shadows and the time of day, that's why it appears the colour it does here, right? But as for this side, it's a bit darker, a bit more rocky, a bit more rugged, right? Now, whilst we are going along here, feel free to leave a timestamp or let me know if you see anything of interest, okay? If you see any potential M caves, any caves in general around this area, okay? What I do want to say immediately I'm not fully aware if other hikers have been in this area, right, at a point in time in the past, directly looking for Kenny Veach or not, right? So if there are hikers that have been in this area, feel free to share your experiences and thoughts down below, right? I know some have, you know, passed by. I do remember that part. But we'll get to that shortly. Zooming on down here. This is roughly the area, okay? And I'll drop you the coordinates, roughly. 36, 35, 12, north, 115, 21, 13, west. You can pause the video if you wish to write them down, just as a reference. Now, what are we really looking at here? Nearby, there was another marker by the person on Facebook saying, is this the M cave? Personally, I don't know if I can see it. Hard to tell. It might be all down to the way the shadows were casted at the time, possibly. Um, but we'll look for the supposed M cave or a M shaped cave in a bit. We just focus on this body, this supposed body of Kenny Beach. Now, when you zoom in enough, you get the idea of how it looked by the person that posted on Facebook. Very blurry when you zoom on in. You zoom on out, it's a, it's a little bit clearer, right? What is on screen? What can we see? Let me know your thoughts. The first thing that stood out to me was you got two factors. One, maybe a bit of shadowing, which could depict maybe a leg of somebody, and then a white object just below it. Now, Reality is, what you need to understand, satellite imagery, you're looking down at it from quite a great height, right? So if something is going to show up on satellite imagery, to an extent, you could argue and say, well, it's going to be a fair size, right? If you think about it, when you do look on the maps, you zoom on in and you see a trailer or you see a car, right? you can make it out, the shape of it, the size. Does that make sense to you? I don't, do we have any like examples just to put into perspective? I'm not sure if we do. Any vehicles here? You see these buildings, kind of 3D at a certain angle. They show up on satellite because they're big in general. They're, they're obviously gonna show up on satellite imagery. You compare a building to a person. Are you gonna see individual people on the ground satellite imagery? Mm, likely not, unless they're a giant. You know what I'm saying? Though, at times, you will get tiny little dots here, which can be bushes or rocks. And yeah, some of them can be big, but others can be pretty small. So you've got to try and take it in mind these different proportions, right? 
as to how a human compares on satellite imagery to a building, to how a human compares to the size of a vehicle, to a human compares to the size of a small bush or rock on satellite imagery. Okay? Just got to take that in mind. Relevant to the size of where it is in real life, comparing that to how it would appear on satellite imagery. So, unfortunately, but also typically, no bloody vehicles in sight when you want them to show up as a comparison. So, the only other thing that I can use as a comparison would be Kenny Veach's M-Cave Mineshaft. That's what we call it within the case, okay? Which is down here. Adjacent to this, I think it's an agave pit or sagebrush, one or the other. Fair size, it stands out, doesn't it, with the colour. This brownish texture, what you see, is the mine shaft. Centre of the screen, you can see maybe like a rectangle, a dark patch, a dark rectangle at a slight angle, middle of the screen right now. That's, I guess, the drop into the mine shaft. Now, the actual drop into the mine shaft isn't great in size, right? I mean, it looks more like a square when you're actually there, right? Whether it's slightly covered or not, whether it's been widened or before that, because I know Jeff Clark has mentioned over time, it's got wider, possibly, because of people coming and going and messing with the area. But nevertheless, it's still small. It's considerably deep or deep enough, but with it being a mine shaft, it's not about the width on top, it's all about the depth, right? And the reason why I mention this is when you look at it from satellite imagery, it looks near impossible to see it, right? Unless you really know where it is, unless you know the coordinates, then you can kind of make it out. But you take this into mind. That's the mine shaft zoomed in to the max, right? Let me zoom out. Can you still see it? I know that blue marker is there, but if you took that marker away, can you see it? Not really. It might just come up as a little dot on the screen, a little speckle, okay? So just take that into consideration, right? You can possibly, small chance, you might be able to see a body on satellite imagery if you know the actual location of it and it was taken at the right time. And then you zoom in as much as possible and really focus, you might be able to make something out. Small chance, right? If we can see the mine shaft, if we zoom on in to an extent and we can see that like dark hole, then there's a chance you might be able to see a body as well, right? Because in terms of Kenny Veach's height, if you laid him down next to the mine shaft, he's probably taller than it. He's not taller in depth, but in terms of flat out on the top surface, I guess bigger, right? If people do want to correct me or put things into perspective with a counterpoint, feel free to do so, right? Just wanted to give that little explanation. So we're looking east. We're near Black Hills and the, the Black Hill Gap. Mountain range goes up and down. We've got some, I guess you call it canyons, small ones, which do they pass on through? Not really. It just goes up to some of the peaks and I don't know how accessible they are, if it's steep or not. You've got a little canyon there, which is pretty steep going up that way, as you can see. Let me just zoom on out. This canyon, which goes up to pretty much a dead end there. And then where it says Black Hills, this canyon, which goes in and out up to here, which once again, I guess you could call it a dead end because it does get very steep at, towards the back. Up this way, not much. And then down here, it opens up. You can see it splits. Mountains on that side, mountains on this side. You can easily walk on through. Is it a place to drive on through? I don't think so. I can't see any dirt roads, any track marks, nothing like that. You could say you can see like a little bit of a pathway or something, but I don't think that's a pathway for driving or really walking on. It might have been caused by water. 
If there's any experts that want to provide a better context, feel free to do so, right? But when you look over that way, you follow that marker, which we'll do shortly, that leads to Picture Canyon, right? The exit point of the M Cave hike route. So if I'm getting over there to here, isn't that far? Possibilities that if Kenny Reach was to come out that way on his final hike, if he was unsuccessful in finding the cave, he might have come on over this way. Possibility heading west. From this camera perspective, looking that way, that's east. But if you're over at Pitcher Canyon, looking vice versa, it'll be west. Okay. As for distance, we'll be checking it out shortly. Zoom on out. Okay. Black Hills. Hike route of the supposed M cave. Okay. And normally it would loop back round to around here. But from the looks of it, Kenny Veach possibly didn't loop back. One thing we need to acknowledge, right? I know some people will say, yeah, but if Kenny Veach is over here, if something like this is his body or remains, why is he over here? It doesn't make any sense. Why did he not return back to his vehicle? Why did he not go in a different direction? Well, my question towards you, who may be sceptical of this, is, well, why did Kenny Veach give misinformation to begin with on his MK Hike video on YouTube? Why did Kenny Veach cause misdirection? Was it on purpose? Was it accidental? Why did Kenny Veach state that if, if he doesn't find a cave on his final hike, he's going to head north for about 40 miles. Why would anyone do that? It makes no sense. But that's what he said in his own words. That on his final hike, if he doesn't find the M cave, he's just going to hike north for another 40 miles. I've already analysed that. We've already looked at the area and surrounding landscape. If you are interested in it, make sure to look back at my playlist and you'll be able to find it, okay? I think, it, I, think I called it the 40-mile theory, okay? So, if Kenny Beach is... It might be seen as an insult, this, but I don't know how else to word it. If Kenny Beach is a little a bit reckless or a bit of an idiot to go 40 miles with limited resources, going in a completely, you know, different vision and direction, an additional 40 miles. Why? What, to find the cave? Well, how true is it to his original hike then, what he did back here, where he supposedly found the cave somewhere in Jome Canyon, or near to Pitch Canyon down here? You know, there's a difference between covering this distance, which there and back, the loop hike is like a total of 11 miles, right? Cut off a bit of it, right? If Kenny Beach wasn't to loop back, how many miles would that be in total? Maybe about five, five, six, seven miles or so. And then heading north onwards. Over in that direction. You see the, the massive difference. If, if you say that you supposedly found the cave within this area, hence why you returned back, recorded it, and then tried going back out one more time. If you say you found the cave somewhere within this area, then why are you going to go 40 miles over this way in a completely different place? If the M cave is over here, and that's why you're going to go the additional 40 miles, what was the whole point then in doing this original hike down here then, right? Either the M cave is within this area, or it's well off in the distance over that way. Do you get what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense what Kenny Veach said originally. And because things don't make sense, and because Kenny Veach isn't exactly consistent with his behaviour and how he describes stuff, as well contradicting the characteristics of the M cave throughout his video, because of all that mess, it's endless possibilities. It opens different theories, which could also be considered as not making sense. Because if Kenny Veach doesn't make sense, his thoughts and patterns and behaviour don't quite add up either. Then we can also look at the other 
theories and points which are a little bit all over, right? If Kenny Veach was willing to go 40 miles north, he may have been willing to go so many miles west and then maybe heading north. You know what I'm saying? It kind of leads in the same direction in a way because if you think about it, if Kenny Veach, you know, got his vehicle round here, hiked up here, possibly to the mine shaft for whatever reason, hence why his phone was found there, loose change, whether that be by purpose or accident, heading over Wild Horse Pass and then going north? Mm, probably not because you look over that way, it's very rocky. Look how it goes up and down the ridges. Extremely, extremely uh, demanding and wearing. Not, not ideal, not suitable. When you do go up these canyons over here, like Dead Man Canyon, Wagon Canyon, you'll be starting from lower ground and possibly working your way up as far as you can go, right? And the same with Hidden Forest, Dead Man Canyon, starting lower down and working your way up. This one's more suitable for general public because it's more of a touristy place, but you get the idea, you get the picture. You start from the bottom, work your way up a canyon. You're not gonna cross over canyons to canyons because that would be very silly, that. So we're taking that into mind. If Kenny Beach was to come down here over Wild Horse Pass, take a left, okay, like how he did in his original M Cave hike video, come down this way, it's going west, and just before going down Pitch Canyon, on the right-hand side, within this area where that blue marker is, roughly where the supposed M cave is, the supposed covered M cave, the keyhole cave, etc., where Kenny Veach walked past and said, yeah, a cave shapes as an M, somewhere like here. Was he giving direct hints or was he confused? I don't know. Different possibilities, right? Just wanted to mark it out for you. Maybe Kenny Veach came back down this way just to double check, thinking, huh, well, I said a place like here, I'm looking about, mm, something reminds me of something, but I can't remember. Oh, I'm confused. That could have happened to Kenny. The thing is, when Kenny Veach came down here on his original M Cave Hike video, he didn't really stop much. He didn't really inspect the rock wall on the right-hand side, did he? Even though there was clearly a visible M-shaped shallow cave. Then followed by the keyhole one, then followed by this supposed covered up cave, which Kenny Beach said, like here, right? And besides that, he just carried on walking after. Did he do the same again? Maybe. Did he double check things on his final hike in the area? Possibly. But I guess he didn't find it. If that's the case, for oh, hopeless. Right, I'll finish going down Pitcher Canyon, winding in and out, coming down to the exit. As you see, it says Pitcher Canyon there. And then where do you go? Normally Kenny, or previously Kenny, would have gone up that way south, which would have gone eventually back to where he parked. But I guess he didn't because his vehicle was left out there abandoned. So, you see over there, as I said, that leads to the Black Hill Gap. You go around that mountain area, you got Black Hill over there, okay? So we follow it down. Imagine if Kenny Beach is walking down this way. It seems to be on a, um, not exactly steep, but a bit of a gradient. So it might have been easier for Kenny. Flatter ground, not completely flat, but easier from where he came from. Drops down a little bit. Just follow it down, kind of goes in and out. And then once we get to here, there seems to be some lines, markings, but once again, it's not a road. You can see down here the opening, right? Gets um, a bit narrow as you're passing on through. Black Hills Gap, the gap. You come down here, maybe Kenny did. Up there looks a little bit too steep, but you never know if Kenny Beach was pushing himself or he wasn't in the, quite the right frame of mind. He might have gone up that way so far looking about. I guess there's no harm in looking in this area. If you do notice anything interesting, strange, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section, even a timestamp, right? 
if you see any objects, if you see a potential cave, you know where it's a bit dark, possibly? Let me know. See, this is the thing what we've got to acknowledge. When it comes to Kenny Beach out there, right? Even if it's ahead or far to the left or far to the right, Kenny Beach likely at the time would be attracted to where there's peaks, mountains, rocks, etc. Not exactly flat ground. Kenny Beach likes off the beaten paths. That's what he tends to do. So this is like off the beaten path. He may have gone in this direction. Because there was a mountain range in this area, there's a possibility that there'll be caves as well. If you're just on flat ground and it's completely vast and open, pure flat ground, likely you're not going to be finding any caves in sight. You need to go somewhere where there's mountains, a rock wall, etc. And that's the type of stuff Kenny Beach is interested in. So if it stands out to him in the distance after finishing Pitcher Canyon, he could have been like, oh, let's go over to Black Hill Gap, Black Hill. Okay. I don't know if Kenny Beach has been in this area in the past. He might have been. He might have been familiar with it, right? So, Pitcher Canyon over that way. Kenny Beach may have come all the way down here to Black Hills Gap. Comes on through to this area where, yes, it's flat ground. Let me just move the camera. It's been a bit awkward. Flat ground over there, of course. Now, I want to make one thing very clear. Over in that direction, if I'm correct in saying, is military land. I believe it's over these mountains where it's military land, testing range, Nellis bombing range, etc. And it goes up that way as well. It's a no-go zone. You get in trouble, you might get injured, you might get caught, whatever. It's not a good idea, okay? But I believe on this side, at least, up to a certain point, you're okay, okay? You'd, you'd have to look back at Jeff Clark's video or even mine when it comes to the military land and the boundary marker, but I think it's okay around this area just because I do remember Scott Natal passing on through, if I'm correct in saying, and I'll highlight that in a second, okay? As for shadows, um, I guess don't be confused by this weird box. I don't think this is a shadow. I believe this might have been taken at a different time and it's been stitched together, if that makes sense. Um, that's why sometimes it does appear in different colours in certain areas, okay? So let's just focus back to this area round here. Not far away, because it depends how you interpret it. If Kenny Beach came all the way down here to Black Hills to maybe look about for the potential M cave, it is near to a road. And if you follow that road further up that way, you can take a right turn, which leads you to Hayford Peak, Hidden Forest Ridge, the Hidden Forest Trail, which is that public um, hiking destination. A place SB Vegas Adventures has explored at a point in time, and maybe multiple actually, and also Scott Natal has as well. And Scott Natal did explain himself in a, a map hike video analysis of the route he took. And if I can remember it correctly, um, kind of like started down this way or so, passing Concrete Visitor Center. And instead of turning off that way, which go down to Joe May Road, Joe May Road here, hold on, come on. This is Joe May Road, as you can see that dirt one. And you follow it, which winds to here. Scott Natal drove up this way, but did not take a right on that one hike. Instead, he drove all the way up this way. Okay. As I said, I've done a, a proper analysis of it if you want to check back. On the left-hand side, over those mountains, military land prohibited access, right? But Scott Natal was driving down this road, right? Zoom out, out a little bit so it's a bit quicker. All the way down to this point here. Taking a right turn. And then parking up within this area. 
apologies about the blowing as it's taking time to process. Parking up in this patchy area as you see here. And we can even do possibly, will it let me? It's not letting me do it yet. That's really annoying that. We'll do the 360 degree photo shortly once it's actually working, right? Lean up to Dead Man Canyon, Enchanted Forest Trail. Okay. As you see here, you got the like visitor sign, description, um, where you park up. Down that way, even though it's kind of glitched out visually, down that way is the way Scott Tall came up. Over that way, in that distance would have been the way he came up as well, um, and passing by the Black Hill. And then I guess you follow it that pathway round and up that way and maybe go off trail if you wish we need to look at this area a bit later because someone said about a body or something anyway hopefully you get the idea make sure we're facing north there we go turn it around Scott Natal would have parked within this area and I said the road that he went on passes by Black Hills this is the road, right here, that's the road, and that's Black Hills adjacent to it. So I don't know if anyone has parked up along this road or pulled into the side and then went across the flat ground to hike up to Black Hills or not. If anyone has, let me know down below. If anyone hasn't but interested, this could be a possibility, right? Maybe this video may help guide you to the location and check it out for yourself only if you wish to, and maybe further analysis is needed just so people are prepared and know what to expect about the area, because these are very serious videos when it comes to this, right? It can be the difference between life or death, right? And if there is a lifeless body in this area, you don't want another one to join after, right? How could this link to Kenny Vitro as a side theory? Well, if you are very sceptical, right, that initially what we have here up this canyon, right, although it's a steep on the sides, which is kind of steep as well, you got this white object here. And if not the white object, right, because this is due for thing, okay? I'm not sure if it's this area or closer to Pitcher Canyon. I know some people in the past, whether it be Jay Chuck, Jay Silverheels or Jeff Clark mentioned about pieces or parts of an aircraft, some kind of aircraft military maybe that crashed in the past and some of the wreckage is found in the mountains. I'm not sure if this is a piece of it. It appears white, it could be, or it could be a rock. Or in the mindset of some people out there, as they've claimed, could be Kenny Veach's body. Once again, let's take in mind the proportion of size to what is relevant as we see on screen as to what you would see in real life. It does appear quite big, this white object, right? So it could be aircraft parts from a crash. But the way the person was kind of like marking it or pointing, I don't know if they were directly pointing to the white object or more so the black object nearby. The, the, the image was very blurry, wasn't it? If I'll be honest with you, if the person was pointing to like the black object, that's more like a shadow on the mountain tops and the blackness, the area, there's more of it scattered about. So that would imply shadows in the cracks or gaps of the mountain or the way the sun has been casted at the time, right? So that can vary, that can change. But this below it appears likely... It's been there for some time, right? And as well, the blackness appears bigger than the white-looking object, so it would imply that it can't be Kenny's body, the black spot or the shadow, because it looks too big from satellite imagery, right? But this is the thing. Whilst people can write it off completely, I'm not going to do that, right? I'll just give you a quick conclusion here. Maybe I can do it later. I don't think Kenny Veach's body shows up on here, but an item of interest does. 
that white object, but there's a fair chance it has you know, no link to the case of Kenny Veach, but it could still be considered a place of interest, whether people have hiked there or not already. I think it could be maybe a piece of aircraft which crashed over time. As said, I don't know if it was this area or the other area the hikers were talking about. I think Jay Chuck actually visited a spot as well in the person who recorded it. As I said, any of the hikers you want to make corrections or confirm what's been said in this video, feel free to do so in the comments section. But as I was saying, I'm not going to write it all off completely. What I do want to highlight is the possibility that if this area hasn't been checked or thoroughly checked, is there a small chance that Kenny Veach could have come on down through Pitcher Canyon and headed on over to this area out of interest if he was desperate looking for the M Cave? You've got to take in mind that if Kenny Veach isn't quite in the right frame of mind at the time, maybe a little bit confused as well, but also desperate and as well slightly conflicted with intense passion to be able to find the cave at whatever cost, even if it means going in a slightly weird direction from what he normally does, let's just put it that way, he may have still come on down just to check, you never know. And maybe at a point in time, he might have got injured, right? And he may have fell off one of the mountains. On which side? I'm not quite sure, it depends which side has been checked, right? So, in the mindset of some people that think this is Kenny Veach's body, somewhere in this area, Kenny may have gone up this way, where it's quite steep, hiked up to a certain point, where it'd be right towards the top. So you can see Hidden Forest Ridge over there, Hayford Peak, Sheep Peak, and Picture Canyon, where that yellow line is. And maybe upon coming down, or if he was walking across, may have tumbled, fallen, down, and hit his body head on some of the rocks lower down, possibly, such as where this marker is placed. If not that, maybe further on down here, depending. It's not like a, a long mountain range. It, it kind of is when well, it comes to an end down here, right, doesn't it? Wagon Canyon. Now... I don't know if it's Wagon Canyon or Coral, Cow Coral Road or whatever you bloody call it. I know Jeff Clark mentioned about passing through there. But in terms of actually stopping and walking about this mountain range if accessible, any possibilities of Kenny Beach being found in general, right? As said, if you want to pause the video, you want to check for M-shaped caves besides Kenny's body, feel free to do so, right? If we do need to return back, we can. You're like, you see that, it looks like a bit of an M-shaped cave, but the problem is it's like the angle it's at and the shadows as well. At a different point, different time, it may not even look like an M. These on the sides. Kenny Beach did, did describe it as low, lower down to the ground, but then at the same time in his video, he did say it's kind of halfway up. So it depends what's true and what isn't. That's why we're looking at it from all different possibilities. Okay. I mean, look, you got like a white dot there. Could just be a rock, but you see, when you look close enough, you start maybe picking up on more things than you would normally. As I said, it's very steep up here on the sides. So maybe not. I will return back to the fairy alternative one with the road that Scott Natal passed down. Okay. I think that's about it there. Down this way, another canyon which you can go in and out of, which you probably can get more up towards the top because it doesn't seem as steep compared to the other, and you can drop back down, down here. Or, you could come down this way, where that yellow line is, on the flat ground, walk up here, so you're adjacent to Sheep Peak, turn right, 
come up this way and then work your way down somehow. So it seems like different access points within this area and it kind of links to go, which is kind of a positive. As for this side though, it seems a bit smoother as for the texture, not as accessible from this side, right? Much steeper, but can't really see any cracks, gaps, caves or anything like that. Is there any mine shafts within this area if you know? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Not really much shows up this way. Down here, what's that all about? Kind of looks, stands out a little bit. Kind of like flatter ground, different colour slightly. Is it gravel or so? And then like a black mound there. I'll drop the coordinates if you're interested. 36, 34, 58 north. 115, 20, 44 west. You can pause the video if you want. If anyone can explain this, feel free to do so. Just, I don't know, the shape of it slightly. I think it's when looking at the Dylan Rounds case, looking at loose in Utah, the way there was like gravel pits and areas where like, it might have been dug out or there was some kind of mining going on at a point in time. I don't know if that applies here. But the only possibility on this side if do you know, look at that there. It looks like part of an M, the way it goes up and down, but not the, the other part. Well, actually, to be honest, you could say at an angle, it looks like a massive M, but there's no cave. It's just the way it goes up and down. But on the side, like the ridge there, if you fell from the top, top up there, and fell down to here on this side, it's kind of like a blind spot slightly from the other side. So Kenny Veach fell from up one of these peaks or topped mountain tops and fell lower down slightly concealed is that a possibility let me know your thoughts down below now we're turning back to the main side here of black hell and we've been adjacent to this road on the side what my alternative suggestion to you is if kenny veach did come on down this way directly looking for the cave or as a an alternative meeting zone for like his brother to come and pick him up right because this is the previous theory we're tying it in with the 2018 CCTV footage at the break in the healing store. Check my videos for reference. The 2022 call made by Kenny Veach's Facebook account towards Susan Veach, sister-in-law. Check my previous video for context there. It kind of highlights the possibilities that Kenny Veach did survive. And 2014 onwards was living elsewhere, laying low, keeping his head down. So, faking his disappearance. How do you fake a disappearance? Well, you go out to a location to cause misdirection and you leave evidence behind as proof to suggest, to state that that's where Kenny Veach went. As I said, over here, Kenny Veach's vehicle around this area was left abandoned by itself. Kenny Veach's phone was found here at the mineshaft with loose change, as well as his scent leading up to this spot. After that, it went, disappeared. Kind of odd, right? But enough evidence out there to suggest that Kenny Veach did go out there as he intended, right? And because there's not been any further evidence to suggest him returning back safely, he's presumed missing and missing out in that area. Enough to throw people off the scent as to where he could actually be right? When taking into consideration that later evidence that came out. And we're kind of suggesting at what point or what area did Kenny Veach decide to get picked up by maybe a family member or a friend? Did he go up to the mine shaft and track all the way back to his vehicle up to Joe May Road and got picked up by somebody else? Or if we're taking it in mind with this new location of interest, did someone drive past Corn Creek Visitor Centre, took the route, as said Scott Natal did, as if going to Enchant um, Hidden Forest, driving down this road, then stopping, parking up on the side, somewhere like here, like that, and Kenny Veach being over that way at Black Hills, and then walking across the flat ground to, the, to then get picked up. Or, if Kenny 
walked across already after searching the area and then waited in the car to pick him up on the side of the road. Is that a possibility? And then drove on into the distance, whichever way, back or onwards. Possibility. Kind of throws people off the scent. You've gone into the desert. You've gone deep. And then traces left as they are, unknown after that. Then you get picked up and taken elsewhere. Drop off point. Seems coordinated, yes, but family members haven't tried searching for Kenny Veach. If they were so worried that he was missing, then they would have gone out searching, but they didn't. And it wasn't as intense, it, they kind of gave up immediately. And maybe the only time when you don't bother looking is either because you don't care, or you do care, but you also know and have closure as to where he really is at. Does that make sense? So, maybe Kenny Veach was picked up. As said, though, this is an area of interest with different theories, whether it links back to the original that Kenny Veach's body was found at that marker, as that person states online, or if it's just a place of interest as to where other possible caves could be, and slash or a location which Kenny Veach did pass by, right? If people are willing to go up to... Hidden Forest Trail, Hidden Forest Cabin, and all the way up there, which is well off as a possibility, then this can also be as possible too, because it is closer and near to Pitch Canyon, right? Now, quick, 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 let's check the distance. We'll do the total distance, maybe, but from Pitch Canyon. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll just do it up to where that thing, about, let's say five miles. Yeah, five miles. It can still take time to do in certain areas where it gets a bit rough and rocky. Take that into mind. Don't underestimate the low mileage. About five miles from Pitcher Canyon, coming down to Black Hills, going around and going up to that marker. Okay? Right. Now, let me just do the total one if possible. So if you went the way as intended, as expected. Up here, coming up that way, slight to the, the, the mine shaft, like that. Coming on down, Wild Horse Pass, but down. I said it's, it's only rough this, so just take that into mind. Twisting and turning in and out. That's already about six miles, seven miles, as I kind of said before, right? And then add that onto the additional mileage of coming down this way. There we go. Up to there. About 11 miles. That's so interesting, right? I mean, it might vary slightly if you remeasure it at a different angle or a different length. As I said, this is rough. But isn't it kind of weird? Just a little bit. Just a little bit weird how the distance from where Kenny Veach may have parked, going up to the standard M Cave hike route, coming out of Pitcher Canyon but not doing the loop but going on to Black Hills, is the same total mileage, roughly, of 11 miles as to if you was to do the M Cave hike loop all the way back to where you parked. And that's 11 miles as well. Not that it really means much, it's just maybe a bit of a coincidence, let's just call it, right? Um, close that down. So hopefully that makes sense to you. When you zoom it out, you see the yellow lines of how things could have gone. Could it have been done in reverse? Probably not. It's just because with it being adjacent, like, in parallel to these, like, canyons, these, um, these mountains, it, it might have attracted him. I'm sure Kenny Veach would have been aware of military boundaries and borders as to where you can and can't go, but, you know, if it was near and he was willing to risk or push it, possibly, because he was so passionate to find the cave. That's what could have been the downfall of him if you're running along the ferry that he's dead out there and missing. But if he's still alive to this day, this could have been a, an area he went to, maybe looking for the cave, and slash or looking for a way out. Right? So, with that into mind, let's just move away for now. You see this marker down here? I said about a 360 degree photo. 
Now, I don't know if the person will ever respond back to my comment. They actually left a comment yesterday, I believe, and I did respond back immediately. I don't think they replied. Very unfortunate. But if there's anyone watching, if they're re-watching now, leave your comments, right? They said at this photo, which was a certain timestamp in the video that I did at the time, right? This photo here, which is kind of like the parking area as if you used to go on the Hidden Forest Trail, right? Somewhere in this area, there was a body. The timestamp was round here, pointing in this direction. What do we actually see, though? What is there to look at? Well, we'll zoom on in in a second. This is just a custom user-uploaded photo by general public, okay? A guy taking a photo with, I guess, his friend or brother, I don't know, he was having a wee in the distance. And I know people will say, oh, why are you doing that? It's like, well, why upload it in the first place then? This is all publicly viewable, public observations, etc. You got a person up against a fence with the hands close together. It, it's pretty obvious, right? But aside from piss watch, let's look for bodies, if there is any. Somewhere in this area. Now, maybe ideally you could enhance it visually, but maybe it's not required at this point. All I want you to do is just pay close attention to what you can see on the screen. If at any point you see a body or a strange object, let me know in the timestamp, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's a few responses, maybe I can do a singular video focus on this area, get some screenshots, change the contrast, change the colors to make things stand out from one another, right? Unfortunately, it's very blurry here, but we'll go kind of like from left to right, okay? Let me know if you see anything in the shrubbery, the bushes, the vegetation. And whilst you're looking along and focusing, as for those that may have joined this live premiere a little bit later, be sure to rewind back. I stress that you rewind back and watch from start to finish to understand what we're referring to today. My thoughts, my opinions, my analysis, my conclusion, my comparisons, the lot. It'll make more sense if you stick around, okay? Can we zoom in anymore? Not really. And I know it goes on over that way, but I don't think they were mentioning over here. I mean, might be some rocks, might be some gravel patchy areas, right? It is one of those things as well where, just like when it comes to rocks, you might see a face, you might see an object within the rock, and it's it could like you, your mind, your eyes playing tricks on you, or there could well be a rock which has the, the characteristics of a face, but it's not literally, right? It's natural. So, on some occasions, you may get carved rocks and stones, which have been done by humans, I personally can't see anything here, right? As said, you will get moments where people may leave comments and they may be of zero interest or it may not lead to anything being found, but you still need to acknowledge it because there might come a time, a place, a moment where you do ignore something and you've wasted a key opportunity, right? We saw it with the Dylan Rounds case, right? You brush this off, you brush that off, and then when a genuine person comes along, despite all the BS from beforehand, it might get forgotten about, and that's um, a shame. I guess for some people, when zooming in so much, you probably get a bit, I don't know, visually it looks a bit weird when you, when you look at it too long, or maybe the motion of it, that's upper ground. Maybe it looks like a jigsaw puzzle to some people, right? The vegetation does vary, of course, depending on season. Okay. So I could see some patchy areas, yeah, but I can't make out a body. Hmm. As I said, let me know in the comment section if you saw anything different. So here we are now, we've got to the part where I acknowledge comments from the previous Kenny Veach video I did a couple of days ago now. Answer any questions, 
see if there's any additional key interesting information we can talk about here and see what you you know think about it start from the newest go down to the bottom I've got quite a few to get through so i'll try and be as efficient as possible clearly i'm saying i'll be there somehow i always manage to stray away here and there back to my happy place thank you see you soon okay we've got cam ran tahir saying the more clues we find the more likely he'll be found I guess a fair point in a way, um, but because we're finding clues and possible evidence all over the place, it does make it a little bit harder. I mean, with other missing people cases, more clues, more hints, directional evidence can lead to finding the person, but other times when it's more scattered, it can lead to more questions and answers. But nevertheless, if there is movement at the end of the day, if there is coverage on the case, it keeps the case alive and it might interest new people over time, which means new ideas, perspectives, fresh faces, and maybe new hikers like what we've seen recently. So there can still be a positive effect at the end of the day. We've got Glenn, shout out to Glenn. Josh saying, finally, the ghost of Silver Heels appears again. Love it. So shout out to Josh. I guess he understands the Silver Heels reference and the chronicles of Silver Heels. Maybe, maybe we summoned him recently. We've got Sonny as well. Shout out to Sonny. Then we've got a person called Etta saying, agree about the tripod, the size of it, when Kenny Beach was out there and how it was only really used once. True. Etta also says, just can't see Kenny using hiking poles. Um, I guess so. I don't know if it's an age thing or a stability factor. I just think that maybe Kenny Veach with his leg injury in the past, that it might have been, you know, done as a bit of precaution. Summer saying Venice Beach is in California. It's a famous beach, not a brand. Ha 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 ha. I understand that. Okay, I'm aware. But there is clothing brands out there, whether to do a partnership with a celebrity or not, or in a certain area, they may name the clothing after a particular country or state or a particular city like New York City or Brooklyn Jumper. I don't know. I'm not a fashion expert, but I've seen it many times, right? Um, what have we got here? Joe Edit saying, hello, if I can help, I just noticed that other people found the M-shaped cave. However, this one was covered with rock. Obviously, they put it there, but I'm not sure. I'm just saying that it could be definitive proof. He responded, June, Sean Horlacher did a video on that. I haven't watched the whole video there. Joey, someone told me in a bar near Las Vegas that Kenny Veach was possibly buried after encountering a military base hatch. Is this talking about the mine shaft now? It's a random comment, this. It goes from one thing to another. But if Joey is from Las Vegas and he was at a bar and someone came up to him and told him about Kenny Veach possibly finding a military base hatch. Kind of interesting. Jeff Clark, let me know your thoughts on this comment. Does it make any sense to you? As for the covered up, supposed covered up M cave, as we call it in the case, Sean Horlicker did walk past it and also get hands on with it. I think Jay Silverhills did a bit. Aqua Chigger, despite being an established channel, completely ignored it, blanked it. What a waste. Jeff Clark documented it as well and explained about the rock on the ground, which came from the covered cave, as if at a point in time after Sean Horlacher's visit out there in 20... 2019, I think. After that, it appears as if other people went down there to investigate and removed one of the heavy rocks which was found on the floor later so who knows who's been there or what people were doing or did anyone find anything or it was just like a brief look kind of odd but as for that covered cave it's been a long-standing debate is it natural or not was it filled in or not and it's a bit divided it kind of mixed varies Scott Natal thinks it's natural. I think SB Vegas Adventures at one point may have suggested it was natural, but then later in recent time claimed that possibly failed him when he did that collab with another YouTuber when walking past it. Sean Horlacher 
firmly believes it's the covered up M cave, but has not gone back yet because at a point in time he was trying to raise money to go back out there, but never reached the target. We've got Skeptical saying aluminum tripods are three to five pounds. Could be white bag for collapsible tripod hooked lengthwise to his backpack. Yeah, maybe. You never know. Maybe it was hooked on the outside of the backpack rather than on the inside. Uh, we can't really make it out in this hype footage, unfortunately. A few people like Cleo suggested that the white object was more so a towel, which Kenny Veach also used towards the end of his hike. But I think that towel was already in his vehicle when he picked it up and wiped himself down. I could be wrong, but yeah. What's this? Warlight Ref, your recall capabilities are remarkable. Appreciate that, Skeptical. Um, I was kind of worried that maybe I would have got rusty or I might have forgotten some key things with covering Dylan rounds for so long and every day, but I can still remember stuff, which is which is good to know. Maybe the dates at times, which can get a bit muddled up, just like how it was back in school where you had to remember all the dates, like in history, etc. Skeptical says, was his truck parked next to the mine? No. I think it might have been described in the past that like there might have been a road that led up to the mine, but it became inaccessible. It was worded like that by one of the hikers in the past. But no, 99, if not 100% of hikers that have gone to the mine shaft have parked like at Joe May Road, and that road kind of reaches a dead end. It doesn't go up to the mine. Jeff saying, cannot drive to the mine. His truck was parked on Joe May Road down below. Yep, that's correct. Skeptical. Average temperature in southwest US in October. High 80s Fahrenheit. High 90s Fahrenheit. Cools down significantly at night. So Kenny Veach did say he was doing an overnight hike out there about two days. So if he was still alive, moving about even in the dark, that could have been where it got him the most, the temperature change. And if he wasn't quite fully equipped either with the correct clothing, could have got messy, right? So like cold trap. June saying, so his sister was beneficiary, not his children. And did he ever have a will? Susan Veach, the sister-in-law to Kenny Veach, a key individual in the case, who's also provided interesting information over time, including the 2022 Facebook phone call made towards her by Kenny's account. Susan says, no, Kenny has not been declared dead. No will. No life insurance payout yet, I believe. June says, he has used the tripod before to film himself as he was talking to us and then he put it in his truck afterwards. That's incorrect, June. The footage of Kenny at his truck was unreleased footage which was not included in Kenny's original hike video. That footage of him at the truck was actually at the end of his hike after he came back from it right? So Kenny did his hike, intro video part at the mineshaft with the tripod deployed. Then he folded it up or, you know, hung it up on his backpack, put it in, carried on with the hike, did the total distance, returned back to his truck, and then set the tripod up once again talking. So it was only used two times, but in terms of the actual official footage, only used once. Jeff Clark clears it up saying, no, he was miles away from his truck when he was t talking at the mine, so he had to carry it on the entire loop back. That and the poles were pretty much useless extra weight. Hiking poles, I guess. Okay. Oh, God, what's this one? Psychoactive420 saying, the M cave discovery with the Area 51 sign is an extremely enigmatic clue to this mystery. Now, what Psychoreactive is talking about here is exploring abandoned mines and unusual places channel on YouTube called Frank. He went to a completely different location, um, undisclosed, if that's the correct way of wording it. He didn't give the location. He said a military guy reached out to him. So that still remains a mystery to this day. Some people believe in it, some people don't. I don't know how close or far away it is from Kenny Reach's hike route. So it's unfortunate that I don't know if we'll ever find out more. But this person says, interesting place of mystery. Area 51 is highly guarded and known for secret invisibility technology. A simple YouTube search of our former president, Bill Clinton, speaking on the James Corden show divulged a lot. Wait, you called him James Condom? You mean Corden? 
I don't know. I don't know if that was a spelling mistake. Anyway, divulged a lot of information about the military installation. The reason his camera was found at home and his girlfriend spoke about his depression is suspicious. How hard would it be to use the carrot and stick to get the desired effect of covering up a potential leak, exposing it for what's really being tested? Leave some coins near a mine shaft, cell phone and vehicle. But here's the kicker. He was depressed. Here's the proof. He quit his job and he left his camera. None of this can be proven by any of us. On the flip side, here, put his camera back, make sure it made him look dishonest and struggling with emotional regulation. PSYOPs is used against the public to perpetuate propaganda all the time. The fact that we all know that Area 51 is involved heavily in specifically invisibility technology should serve as further evidence that Kenny Veach met an unfortunate and unexpected fate. It's almost 10 years, no trace of his body, but the cave was found. Reconsider and challenge your sceptical thinking, knowing about Area 51 technology, spying, witnessing. Area 51 technology are very different things. Area 51 is authorised to shoot to kill trespassers. I haven't said enough, but hopefully some of you non-believers will get kind of view on one of many Area 51 related disappearances. Response wise, Josh saying there is no M cave. This was all an elaborate plan to steal life insurance money. All these videos were done on purpose to build a backstory to cover him and his sister's ass. The only real evidence is that Kenny Beach was broke and needed money, so he staged it. Jeff Clark says there is no life insurance, that there is no point in keeping such a hoax going for a decade. Jeff Clark says, I learn more and more to this all being related to the restricted area. Many unexplained events that require something beyond normal explanations out there. Missing time, UFOs appearing on video, on command, multiple people reporting invisible footsteps, etc, etc. And the nagging fact that the military wants to restrict that land a year after Kenny Veach went out there, but not in the decades beforehand, it cannot be a coincidence. As well put, Jeff. Very strange. And as for the whole suicide and depression thing, that's what the girlfriend said. When it comes to the general public that jump to that conclusion, Kenny Veach committed suicide. What's their source? What's their reference? What's their evidence? Oh, it's what the girlfriend said, and that's it. Where's the proof of the medication? Where's the proof of the lack of medication? Where's the proof of the doctor notes? Where's the proof of this and that? You know, there isn't any. Where's the proof of Kenny's body? Where's the proof of the blood? Where's the proof of the suicide scene? There isn't any. Right? And as for the camera, people say that the camera wasn't taken. Well, if you look back, the girlfriend said the camera wasn't taken, but a different one was, just for taking photos. Now, maybe in another comment she said no cameras were taken at all, but she would have clearly contradicted herself there, which then would have made further questioning as to why is she not consistent with what she says. A little bit dodgy, right? Joker saying, were Kenny's walking poles part of his tent set up? Um... Can't remember, I'd have to look back at that interesting point there. I'll look back at it if I can. Jeff Clark saying, yeah, none of us have been called idiots and fakers more often than when Silverheels was lecturing. Lol, I was accused of being a snake in the grass who never really hiked the area, even whilst I had three videos of my hike posted years before Silverheels even heard of the cave. <laughs> yep. And as well, Sean Horlacher named the penguin. Sean a frozen penguin on the cross for being, <laughs> for being silent while everyone was worshipping him and his theories. Well, he also said that really Robin was going to murder him with a knife and carve a big capital M on his chest for disagreeing with his hikes and theories. Oh, Silverheels, we need more, we need more claims like this. And Jeff Clark was labelled as a person that needs to be locked up in a mental institution as well. <laughs> oh... In a while. Josh says, why does Kenny's family feel the need to chime in about his disappearance so much on social media platforms years later? They're obviously reading comments and very defensive when you call out foul play. If he's really dead and you're so sure about it, why not just move along with your life? This all looks like life insurance fraud and all the videos were just a backstory to commit fraud. The only real evidence is that he was broken, desperate for money and wanted the attention. Zero physical evidence exists proving he's dead. True, but a lot of evidence, in fact, proving he's alive. The M cave doesn't exist, and it's almost laughable people actually are falling for it. 
But this is the thing. Whereas people can say it's laughable that people are following the MK, people are doing it because it's an interest to them. And whilst people that go out there, Josh, hiking, even if they fail to find the cave, they're still enjoying what they're doing because some of them are actual hikers, exploring the area, finding other things of interest. So it's not a wasted journey out there for some people, right? I guess for people online that may be really focused on the case and then find out it's not entirely true. It could burst people's bubbles and that can lead to resistance. But, you know, it's mystery, mystery at the end of the day. See what happens next, right? And finally, James Dunbar saying, after watching your last video, I went back and rewatched the opening bit on Kenny's M Cave hike. Been a couple of years in which he describes the cave and location. Is he left or right-handed? He used his left hand to visualize the cave location. His exact words describing the valley in which said cave goes as follows. It's a little canyon and it's kind of scary because there's all kinds of cliffs and stuff. In my opinion, it doesn't sound like Pitcher Canyon. It sounds more like the canyon that DJ Moore couldn't get into from the bottom and the same canyon that Steve has shown multiple times after climbing the beast. I don't think anyone's been in there that I can recall, but can't say for certain. So as for Steve, I guess Steve is SB Vega's adventures, if I'm correct in saying. Okay. Uh, Jeff Clark, let me know your thoughts on this comment by James. Although I might not be an expert on these specific locations, I know Jeff Clark did closely follow these spots, such as DJ Moore, when he tried going out there and recorded parts of it. I remember that. And if SB's here as well, I'll try and tag him. This comment could be quite interesting, right? It does come down to language and how you interpret and how it's worded by the person such as Kenny, right? The visual descriptions, you know, when he says one thing, he could mean the other. We've seen the contradictions by Kenny, so who knows? Um, if we can have a closer look at this area within the case, maybe we, we can. And, you know, I don't know if the video of today links to this comment or not, but who knows? Endless possibilities, right? Is that it? Almost not cool making me shake. Are you shaking like the cave? I don't know. Right, so that's it for the comments there. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and you understood what I was getting at within it, the analysis, but the alternative potential as how things could have played out when it came to Kenny Veach being out there supposedly speaking. If you do have any comments yourself, list them down below. If you've got any additional pieces of information or you want to add in corrections, or you might have some questions to the comments what we read out in today's video. Leave everything all down below. All the discussions, all your ideas, you want to dump it down below in the comment section, feel free to do so. It'll help keep the video active. It'll help spread awareness. And feel free to like and share the video if you want to. As I said, links down below in the pinned comment section if you want to visit them as well. That aside, linking back to the original point of this video, I don't think Kenny Veacher's body was found there on satellite imagery. I think it's other objects, other stuff. But it's still a place of interest, nevertheless. I also feel that with time, if Kenny Veach was left out in the open, his bones would have been scattered by now due to the wildlife such as the mountain lions, etc. So it can actually make it much harder to find Kenny, obviously in one piece and maybe just in general. But we see what happens next because there can be twists and turns and there can be unexpected mysteries within a mystery. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time whenever that is. For now, goodbye and good night.